Hey, what's up everybody? Mike Lindsley back with you. Nine minutes with me on IGTV, YouTube, and Facebook. I am here at Rosie's Corner in Burton on a frosty day. Nothing better than to grab lunch at Rosie's. They've got warm chicken and biscuits for you. They also have an Ash Wednesday special where they're doing the haddock a little bit early today, a fish Friday with some of your mac and cheese uh, here on a Wednesday. You can get the fish dinner, you can get the sandwich. Uh, take your pick. Don't forget about their nice salads in the cooler. They've got hot and cold subs as well. Rosie's Corner, the place to go, man. They are the official pizza shop of the ML Sports Platter. I want to get into over the next eight plus minutes here. Um, I want to get into the one seeds in college basketball right now. I think there's a lot of people who are, you know, we're kind of knocking on the, the tournament door here. We're knocking on March Madness and kind of trying to figure out where teams should be placed. Zion Williamson certainly, I think, is the X factor in all this because uh, he is the phenom. He is the story in college basketball. But Duke is clearly not the same team uh, with, without uh, uh, Zion Williamson. This guy is an absolute and utter force. He's a defensive maniac. He plays, you know, he protects the rim. Uh, the guy is just awesome. And he should be the number one pick in the NBA draft. But while he's been out, Duke has had some struggles. I mean, Christ, as we record this, they almost lost last night to uh, Wake Forest at home. Uh, you know, you should be able to beat Wake Forest without three of your uh, top All-Americans. You know, you still should have more talent and beat Wake Forest. I know that's not how it, was, how it always works, but uh, to me, I don't think that the committee should penalize um, this team, with Zion being out with overall record, uh, I realize that certain people may look at it and go, well, they're not as good, they're not as this or that, but they've won every game this year except at you know at Duke against Syracuse and Gonzaga in Maui. They, they've won every other game. They've won, uh, they've blown through their, their conference for the most part, actually, in North Carolina. I should add to that as well, when Zion was out. But again, it's not like we're talking about a team that has seven, eight, nine losses. We're still talking about one of the top-tier teams in college basketball without Zion Williamson. Now look, do I think Duke can make a deep run in the tournament uh, without uh, uh, Zion? I, I, I don't. I think they could reach the Sweet 16 or Elite Eight. But you're going to be facing a lot of quality teams, different time zones, different arenas, different systems, different coaches, different everything different styles. I just think it's going to be very, very difficult. They could stretch it and make the Final Four, but put it this way, Duke will not win a national title without Zion Williamson. It just won't happen. Uh, they need him in there. Uh, they need him. They need Reddish. They need Barrett. They need Trey Jones. They need everybody in there to be healthy. They need their role players and White and company to play well. They need a full arsenal. Now, assuming that Zion comes back by the start of the ACC tournament, hell, assuming he comes back for the last game of the year, I'm not really sure. Last game of the year, of course, is coming up this weekend for everybody. I am still going to pencil in Duke as a number one seed. I think that there will be enough smart people, enough smart minds in that room, and the overall Duke resume – Playing the toughest uh, in the conference, tough playing in the toughest conference in college basketball, and playing arguably the toughest schedule in college basketball. I think that should still get it done for the Duke Blue Devils. And again, I'm assuming Zion will be healthy for at least the ACC tournament and then beyond. I would still pencil Duke in as a number one seed. My other my other three number one seeds. Well, I'll tell you what. While I realize the uh, terrific season of Kentucky and some others. I think North Carolina has slid in there as well. I think that they're a number one seed. I think what they've done lately, uh, you know, they had that big win against Duke. They've basically cleaned house in the ACC. They have a chance at a conference title. I think this North Carolina team is flying under the radar. I love Kobe White, the freshman. I love what they bring to the table from a veteran leadership standpoint. You can't get enough of Cam Johnson. You can't get enough of uh, you know Luke May and these guys dominating and shooting threes and playing up tempo. And this is actually a better defensive team than Roy Williams has had the last couple of years. Can you believe it? North Carolina, one of the winningest programs in college basketball history, an absolute juggernaut through the years, a blue blood program. This team is flying under the radar. They're flying under the radar of Duke, Gonzaga, Kentucky, Tennessee. They're flying under the radar. They're even flying under the radar of a couple of Big Ten teams, which I find to be asinine because I think North Carolina is as good, if not better, than every team in the Big Ten, and that includes Michigan and Michigan State and Purdue. So uh, I think this North Carolina team is absolutely positively in a position to get a one seed. I don't care 
what people say about, well, you can't give three one seeds to a, a, a one conference. Why not? Why can't you do that? Uh, we saw it in, in 2009 with the Big East. Uh, it, it happened then. Why can't it happen again? If those are the three deserving teams, then give it to them. My other two number ones, I think Gonzaga. Gonzaga's been there all year. They played a very, very, very strong non-conference schedule, beat Duke and Maui. Uh, they passed the look test. They're blowing through their league schedule as per usual. I would put Gonzaga in there as a one seed. You can't ignore the wins. You can't ignore the players. They look healthy uh, for the most part uh, for who they have. We know that they lost uh, their, one of their megastars um, you know, at the beginning of the year and then got him back and then uh, lost him again. But they still have Achimura. They still have a terrific backcourt when you look at uh, you know uh, Norville Jr and you look at to Josh Perkins, that's a very, very good team. I think Gonzaga's a national title contender. My other number one seed is Virginia. I mean, there is no question in my mind this team is playing with a little bit of a chip on the shoulder. They're trying to prove people wrong from last year and losing to the 16th seed in UMBC. This is a team out to prove something. This is a team that's on a freaking mission. I watched them drain 18 three-pointers against Syracuse in the Carrier Dome on Monday, albeit against a defense that kind of didn't guard uh, you know, on about 11 or 12 of them. Still got to make them, though, and then, of course, they were contested the rest of the way and still made an extra six, seven threes. Uh, Ty Jerome's a pro. Kyle Guy's a pro. DeAndre Hunter's a pro. They've got mega, 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 mega potential to reach the Final Four. And i got to tell you, I hope they do. I root for storylines in sports unless it's, you know, the Boston Red Sox. Um, and I think Virginia losing to a one seed last year and making history the wrong way and then coming back this year – and getting to a Final Four would be incredible. Not even winning the whole thing, just getting to the Final Four would be a marvelous achievement for Tony Bennett and his team. I'm actually rooting hard for the Hoos. I hope they do well uh, and make the Final Four. So those would be my number one seeds. I would right now today. Again, we have a lot of basketball left to play. We got a couple of regular season games. We got a conference tournament. We got you know all that stuff before we hit Selection Sunday. But as of today, I would go with Duke. I would go with Virginia in one to four order. I'd go Duke. I'd go Virginia. I'd go Gonzaga. And then I would go North Carolina. I do think that Kentucky is just outside that box. I think that a Tennessee might be outside that box. Again, a lot's going to change with the conference tournament. What happens if Duke goes down the first game they play and let's say you know, uh, Tennessee rolls and wins the SEC. Do you give Tennessee a one seed? Are they back in position for that? But as of today, as of right now, I would give those four teams one seeds without question. I think they've all pretty much deserve it. They have all played unbelievable schedules. The ACC teams, I mean, you've been playing difficult games for the most part for the last couple of months. I mean, that ACC conference is brutal. All of January, all of February, and then the beginning of March, you've got gauntlet schedules. You're going at Virginia. You're going at the Carrier Dome in Syracuse. You're going at Duke. You're hosting North Carolina. You're visiting teams that might have under 500 records but are still tough at home, like Wake Forest and uh, many others. You look at Clemson, a team that's really on the on, on kind of the bubble, uh, right on the bubble rope right now. This team should send eight well, probably nine teams to the NCAA tournament. The bubble is weak. I expect Clemson to get in. I expect Syracuse to get in. And you know what? Just playing that conference alone uh, should put uh, a little bit more, I think, idea into some people's minds that, hey, Duke's missing Zion, but they still have a tremendous record, and they've won most of their games anyway. Let's see what happens. I really hope he plays in the tournament. He's been the number one storyline this year in college basketball. He's the phenomenon that is, and uh, we deserve to see him. And uh, he deserves a finishing touch before he goes number one probably in the NBA draft. Get here to Rosie's Corner, the official pizza shop of the ML Sports Platter. I got Ash Wednesday today. You're in and around Central New York. Grab that fish. Grab the mac and cheese. Grab the pizza, the wings, the hot and cold subs. I'm going to go pick up some Parmesan garlic wings myself and a slice of pizza. Can't wait for that. And a nice fresh salad as well. Thanks to Jody and Jason of the gang for having me out. Rosie's Corner, the official pizza shop of the ML Sports Platter. Thanks for watching YouTube, IGTV, and Facebook. As I always tell you, enjoy the games.